I have to blame myself. So the topic is called how to automate your process with zero scripting. But it will be, well, zero scripting was to capture your attention. It will be a little of scripting. It won't be like uh, you who write the script, but still there will be scripting. So let's say 0 0.5 scripting. Um, and we'll begin from a quote. Uh, that's a nice way to start presentations. Everything that can be automated must be automated. Um, actually, I think that I invented this quote. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started to recap in my head uh, when I faced some problem on how to make a connectivity in the building and I read some blog article on how to create a, a wireless connectivity between some ser sensors or should we lay wires and there was a quote in the blog that everywhere you can lay a copper wire you must lay a copper wire because all the wireless stuff it just generates problems. Um, so, working in uh, FlashP for so many years and facing so many automation tasks, I invented my own quote that everything that can be automated must be automated because if you don't do it, then your competitors will do it or robots will do it or whatever else will do it. And which processes are we talking about today? Uh, I've split it to two groups. First group is some initial process, for example, uh, we'll talk a bit later about examples, some, something that happens uh, when you start working, and another group is operating, when you have huge load, ongoing processes, and some stuff, some stuff has to be uh, automated. So for the provisioning group, we have like device creation processes, uh, assignments for some plugins, streams, and whatever, and uh, device configuration. We'll see how these processes can be automated, and for the operating process, we'll have uh, some massive operations with huge uh, numbers of the devices. Uh, notifications about some problems that may occur. Automatic common sending on some conditions. Data manipulation side flash and data injection from third party systems. Uh, but first, let's recap what do we know by now. We'll, uh, we'll have schemes during this conference day, so you're already used to it. So tracker, channel, then it goes to device, and then it goes to some stream to send data. Plugins, plugins may pull out data from some third party platform. Uh, in analytics, we have calculators that count intervals. Um, Everything is available in event mode via MQTT API. Everything is available in REST API to manipulate all this stuff. Uh, yeah, this is your app layer. We'll use the scheme later on to uh, do some visualizations on, on new features. Uh, and before we continue further, I would like to introduce you to two new stuff that was invented this year in FlashP. First one is this QR code will lead you to groups concept. So group is something that unites device, stream, calculators, and plugins. So if you have <coughs> plugin uh, and calculator and the stream that has to be all assigned to some group of device, you uh, create a group, add all these instances there, and once you assign device to a group, it will be automatically assigned to all the stuff in the group. And the second instance we will meet here is a webhook. Webhook, in our terms, I, don't, I know if that webhook is something commonly used in industry, but in FlashP terms, webhook is something that is triggered by MQTT event and can execute HTTP request, and this re HTTP request can go to FlashP REST API, or it can go to some third-party platform. It can go to your application layer, or it even can be a chain of requests. For example, first it goes to third-party, gets some data there, makes some combination of data, and then injects into your application layer. <laughs> we'll see more examples further. 
um, yeah, there will be an article about webhooks in knowledge base, but you don't need to scan this QR code. Just go to flespy.com knowledge base KB and look for a webhook. First things first, device creation. Uh, Flespy is a device-centric platform. We honor the number of devices connected to our platform. <laughs> So we try to make device creation process as easy as possible. So under this QR code, you may find an article how to create Flespy devices in bulk, so many devices at once. And there are five methods there. So we try to overwhelm, overshoot our uh, customers with the ways to create devices because we need more devices. Uh, more automation to guard of automation, more devices to uh, <laughs> uh, so here we will see, like, uh, of course, API. It will require scripting, sorry. Uh, UI in channel. There are two ways to create devices in bulk in UI in channel. Uh, webhook may create devices automatically for you on the event of new device connecting to channel. Or there is also a browser tool where you can inject the data from uh, some uh, Excel table or CSV file and create devices uh, in bulk. Dish, 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 dish. The next automation topic is device assignments and this is where our new uh, body comes to help us, the group. So as I said, you have uh, group, assign some instances to group, and once new instance is added to group, it will be automatically linked to anything else. So instead of having like 10 API calls after device uh, had been created, you have just one API call to assign device group. Or you may even have a webhook that captures device creation event and assign it to a group, so no even one request required. Uh, pretty easy to. Next case is device configuration. So Nadia told us about uh, the feature of sending commands to devices. Uh, and indeed there is some case when you connect new devices, you want some uh, commands to be sent automatically to the device. For example, to change some reporting interval or configure some um, geofences or configure some uh, events triggering. and uh, there is, there are two options for bulk device configuration. First is magic link setbox flespy.io. It has the same interface as the device settings sections with a small uh, Im improvement that you may create groups of devices and groups of settings, so-called macroses. And you may send this macros, a group of settings to a group of devices. So it will automate a huge massive uh, of common delivery to the devices. Uh, this article will show you all the steps how to do this. And the second option is to write a script, but it, as I promised, that will be not you who write the script. Uh, we may ask our new friends, neural networks for help. So if we met on such an event three years ago, we will speak about blockchain, uh, but uh, in these days we'll speak about neural networks. Um, and it's as easy as for example, you have a setting, you click on this button on how to send it, you uh, copy copy the serial uh, format, and say, uh, for example, this is from Visual Studio Code Copilot. In the beginning I wrote, so this script should send this serial request, which I inserted from the interface, to this list of devices, and here is the list. Then I write a comment, set token and it provides me with, the, uh, uh, the neural network provides me with a line of code that I should write. Uh, then I write next uh, comment, like create a variable for a list of devices. Then I write the next comment, run iteration, and it will write some code that will do all the, all the iteration. Uh, and the start of iteration, then I write comment like send this serial request, it injects it, this line. So uh, I write some processing here. So if response code is not 200 error, then I just 
prompt the uh, code, com uh, Visual Studio Code, with what I want to see, and it provides me with the code. I hit tab button, and it injects everything that I need. Uh, actually, I, when, when I used it, I, I was a bit shocked how, how great it can write, how, can, how it can understand what do I need. So if you, know, if you haven't uh, tried it yet, you may give it a try. It's a really interesting experience. Or, of course, ChatGPT can do it even better without <laughs> any prompting. Uh, line by line, you just say, uh, do it. And it does it. Uh, I have to admit that it didn't work from the first uh, run of the script. I specified what was the error, and it created correct script. But still, it, it's still workable. So it's very easy to create a script that will do whatever you need. And FlashP provides you with the tools how to do it, because FlashP provides you with interface on how to do it in command line mode. And uh, these scripts can use it in command line mode. Uh, I just used bash script, but it can understand if you need a Python script to do this. Uh, just show, like, this is C URL, write a Python code that will write it using such a library, and it will do it. Uh, okay, that's it. Mm. And now we transition to operating use cases. Um, mass device operations in API. If we go to crawl the documentation, the gate to uh, gateway API devices, there will be many requests uh, for devices, and there will be some special dev selector that is usually used to select devices. And mm, most of our users think that this is just the list of IDs, or uh, there is a keyword all to select all the devices and apply the request to the devices. But uh, in real life, it's much more powerful. Dev selector is a pretty powerful tool. So uh, you may use all the fields the device have to select only the devices that you need. For example, if we need to select a device that has Corvette substring in name, we run uh, name equals asterisk Corvette asterisk. So this is uh, several symbols wild car char character. It will select like uh, my Chevrolet Corvette, my wife's Chevrolet Corvette, my boss Chevrolet Corvette, and whatever you have in the list of your devices. Uh, by uh, I am EI mask, like this, configuration point ident, then the start of the ident, and then, for example, you, you may use uh, asterisk or uh, question mark. Uh, question mark is for one symbol. So you may select some group of devices because like mm, device manufacturers may have the beginning of the AMI uh, the same. Or, Mm, devices that generate huge amount of storage filtered by message size. It's in kilobytes, so message size greater than 50,000 will give you a device that has size that greater than 50 megabytes. Uh, or devices with the type that works over protocol, for example, VLAN APS, like this. Protocol name equals VLAN APS. Uh, or device with position speed in telemetry. So by the last known value of some parameter, you just specify telemetry point, position point, speed greater than five or less than five. So all the slow moving devices will be uh, returned in the request. And uh, yeah, it's not only for how to get all these devices to see you, to see them, right? It's also every request that has dev selectors, for example, you need to send uh, some update for messages to, uh, messages size or messages rotation size to change the amount of stored data you use uh, this as a selector, and all these devices that adopt this selector will be updated. Yeah, and the last case is about unactive devices by specifying timestamp in last active field. Uh, do not under, under underestimate device selector. It's a pretty powerful tool. Okay, uh, we got four more cases left, and all of these cases are covered by the webhooks. Uh, which are pretty interesting and powerful stuff. So remember capturing MQTT event and uh, generating some HTTP request on this. So first is system problems notification, quite easy. You have Telegram app on your phone, you subscribe for um, channel blocked MQTT event um, and create a webhook that publishes data there. It is created in the templates 
of the webhooks, and we will see it in the uh, workshop that we will have after the lunch. The next case is automatic command sending. For example, you need to trigger the engine block command as soon as device goes outside some geofence. Uh, so what we have, we create a calculator that will uh, generate an event plus p interval gateway calcs plus devices uh, device id activated as device leaves some geofence. This is what the webhook subscribes for, and it will trigger REST API call to block the engine. So this is the case when MQTT event is triggering to plus p REST API. Something more interesting, data manipulation inside PlaySP, it was partly touched by Alexei Shurko in previous presentation. For example, you have devices mm, that can detect trips, and you have a parameter, trips mileage, or trips duration in your standard data flow. And then you decided to buy a new uh, party of devices from some new manufacturer that cannot detect trips, but you still, wants to, still, you, you still want to receive these events on your site via stream and have this data stored in your messages storage. So what you do, you create an interval that detects strips, and then you create a webhook, so once a new interval is created, it posted directly to the device storage, and it appears there, it updates telemetry, and it is posted to a stream. So uh, you enhance your new devices with the new feature using FLASP capabilities. The last but not least, uh, that's interesting case that was invented on FLASP uh, hackathon in Gurtum a month ago or so. Uh, so it was the idea that uh, each trip has to be equipped with the address when the trip uh, started and the trip ended. And uh, the easy but expensive solution is create a plugin that will append address to each and every message. And then calculator will just get first message of the interval and the last message of the interval and append it to the address where the trip started and the trip ended. But with the webhook, we may create a chain of requests. So when interval is created, we know the position of trip started and trip ended. We perform request to Google to get the address of uh, where the trip started and ended. And then second request of the chain injects it to the interval. Um, so everything is pretty doable, uh, scalable, flexible. Uh, yeah, and that's it with the examples. So in this presentation, I will have a bit longer list of conclusions than in my previous one. Uh, and the first is uh, think in automation mode. In Flespy, we have a magic number, seven, if some stuff, uh, some task uh, that is done manually is repeated more than seven times, we <laughs> invest our time to automate it, to write a script or uh, create a service that will do it with very rare exclusions. Uh, and maybe seven is even too much. Uh, webhooks are very powerful. They are so powerful that we even have uh, in Flespy, we have a club of amateurs to freak out with webhooks. Uh, every new task from our customers, we try to s stretch webhooks on it and see how it, uh, how it works. Unfortunately, there are two members only in this club, me and our front-end engineer, Evgeny Spitzen. Uh, so uh, if you want to welcome to the club, uh, you may share with us <laughs> your ideas. We may edit as a template to the webhooks page. Uh, and ask automation questions because uh, uh, groups and webhooks appeared in FLASP uh, because you asked us uh, the questions how to solve some tasks. So if you were silent, we would stay where we were. <laughs> but you asked us questions and we created uh, such wonderful tools for you. That's it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much, Jan. Um, do we have any questions for Jan? Please, Roni. Hi, Roni from Location Solutions. Um, I really like uh, 
the webhooks and the automations. Um, I'm wondering if there's, uh, there's some use cases where we don't want to automate because sometimes we could be using a webhook too much that is costly. Is there a way to set some kind of limits on these um, webhooks mm -hmm. usage? Uh, webhooks work uh, in, in a subsequent mode. So once event is triggered, then a webhook is blocked for new events until it executes the uh, API call it has to execute. So you cannot use webhook instead of uh, streams, for example, because each message has to be delivered one by one. So um, the tasks that uh, are singular, like device created, assign it to group. That's that's pretty good example. Or interval created, um, e expand it with some data. That's pretty good example. But uh, the pricing of webhooks is that it's uh, it's free, so you, you don't need to pay for it. Uh, but that's why, because they are limited, so they are not uh, designed to serve super huge load of the requests. Uh, in the last slide, uh, you were showing us that uh, we can reverse geocode uh, via Google uh, into interval. Uh, does it have to be Google services or can I call whatever API I want? Uh, you can go to whatever API you want. Uh, in the webhook interface, you may specify a special rules for parsing the response uh, and inject it and process it, whatever you like. But uh, the response has to be in JSON format in order to you can access the fields. Yeah. So as far as, uh, as it is JSON, mm -hmm. I can specify the rules for passing uh, and then enhance the message. Uh, yeah, exactly. So welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have like more direct questions on I've got this format of data, can you help me set up a webhook? You're very welcome. Oh, I me JSON together so with Eugenia okay. will be happy to help you. All right, very good. Any any other questions? So what is the difference between the webhooks? Uh, just wait for the microphone. So what is the difference between webhooks and plugins? Because uh, I thought for geocoding, you can use the plugin also to mm -hmm. geocode the message. So it's better to use the webhooks or a plugin for such such a thing like a geocoding? Um, that's uh, a good question. So architecturally, the plugin uh, can be assigned to a device and it processes each device message. And that's it. Everything that plugin can do, just get the pre-processed message, uh, finish the processing, and enhance it. That's it, just device message. With the webhook, you may do much more. So any MQTT event in Flespy, you can capture it, process it, send a chain of the request, not only like one uh, plugin, one request, but a chain, do some uh, automation and you can modify a message or not modify a message or trigger some API call or do some scripting or uh, inject some data to your platform in some way. So it's uh, much more powerful, but I think they're just like different. Here it just processes message and this is a huge tool for automation. Okay, thank you. So for that reason we can use both here. Yeah.